Good morning, faithful listener. You are listening to the Bible Explained podcast, where the Bible gets explained. So grab your cup of coffee and stay tuned as we read through the book of Luke. Happy Thursday, friends and faithful listeners. You have tuned into the Bible Explained podcast, the podcast that explains the Bible. So excited that you chose to join in with your cup of coffee this morning to discuss the scriptures with me, because we're going to be talking about Luke 18 and finishing up this chapter and talking about a certain blind man that trusted in Jesus. So let's read Luke 18, 31 through 43 out of the W.E.B. version or whatever version you prefer to read out of, whatever that might be. But friends, before I begin, don't forget to go over to the YouTube channel. I've got some exciting uh, ideas for it coming up soon. So check it out. Just type in P40 Ministries LLC into YouTube and just subscribe to the P40 Ministries YouTube channel. But okay, let's go ahead and read Luke 18, 31 through 43 this morning. He took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all the things that are written through the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be accomplished. For he will be delivered up to the Gentiles, will be mocked, treated shamefully, and spit on. They will scourge and kill him. On the third day he will rise again. They understood none of these things. This saying was hidden from them, and they didn't understand the things that were said. As he came near Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the road, begging. Hearing a multitude going by, he asked what this meant. They told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, and he cried out, Jesus, you son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him that he should be quiet, but he cried out all the more, you son of David, have mercy on me. Standing still, Jesus commanded him to be brought to him. When he had come near, he asked him, What do you want me to do? He said, Lord, that I may see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. All the people, when they saw it, praised God. A theme I notice when Jesus heals people is that Jesus often says, Your faith has healed you. I wonder if that's one of the reasons why we often don't nowadays receive healing a lot of times. (laughs) And I don't want to get myself in trouble for saying that because I also know I have very little faith when it comes to healing. We're kind of taught nowadays, especially in Western culture, I think that um, we can't really be healed by anything other than doctors and medical stuff. Just something to think about because it is a curious thing that Jesus often says your faith has healed you. This kind of also sounds like the individual person is the one that needs to have the faith also that they can be healed. So the person themselves who are sick have to have that faith to be healed like that. I don't know. I I mean, it's hard to talk about healings because we don't see them a lot. Nowadays, like faith healings, we don't often see that in the church or really anywhere, especially here in uh, the culture that we live in. I don't know. Lots of things we, I could talk about with this, but I'm not going to get too much into it. Let me go ahead and start in verse 31. So Jesus says, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all the things that were written through the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be completed. So you remember that Jesus is making his way to Jerusalem very slowly. <laughs> And finally, he's getting kind of close to the city itself. So he warns his disciples on the way. Behold, we're getting close. We're getting close to Jerusalem and everything that was prophesied about me is going to take place. I'm going to be delivered to the Gentiles. I'm going to be mocked, treated shamefully and spit on. They're going to scourge me and kill me. And on the third day, I will rise again. But Jesus doesn't actually say the word I. He says the word he over and over. He will be delivered to the Gentiles. He will be mocked, treated shamefully. They will scourge him, kill him. And the third day, he will rise again. So the disciples understood nothing. They were just like, what is going on here? And I think we talked about in Mark where they were afraid and confused and scared to ask Jesus more about this subject. They just didn't want to know. 
kind of is how Mark sort of portrayed it was that the disciples were just they they wanted their um, <laughs> blissful ignorance, you know, they did not want to really know the truth. It's possible that they just had this idea, this picture of Jesus, what they truly believed he was going to be, you know, that uh, Messiah that conquers all the Romans and takes back Israel and all this stuff. Perhaps they just had this picture of Jesus so clear in their heads that they could not understand the prophecy of Jesus, even though they understood the prophecy, like they knew that there was a prophecy for sure about Jesus. They weren't understanding how the prophecies connected, I suppose, to Jesus. Now, later on, they're going to understand all these things after it takes place. And it's kind of funny how it happens because the angels like Jesus told you all this was going to happen. <laughs> like, why are you confused? But their eyes were not opened until that time. They just couldn't understand it until it takes place. And I do believe that is how many things are for us when it comes to prophecy, especially prophecy of the end times. I kind of feel like we are similar to the disciples when it comes to those prophecies. Like we have an idea of what's going to happen, what's going to take place. Like we truly believe in our minds that something is going to happen in the end times but Jesus rarely works the way we believe he's going to when it comes to prophecy, you know, and, and I just do think that uh, even though we have an idea possibly of what the end times might be or might look like, it's prophecy. We're not really going to understand it until it takes place. Like, I do truly believe that I don't think we're any better than the disciples, probably if we were walking along Jesus and didn't know what was going to happen to him, we would be doing the same thing the disciples were doing. In fact, I know we would be. We would be like, okay, I don't understand this prophecy. I, I don't get it. <laughs> you know, we believe that Jesus is going to do this great and mighty thing. And this sounds contrary to what we think. So it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the sayings were hidden from them until it takes place. And that's kind of the same thing that goes on uh, nowadays with prophecy. And we even know that there are certain things that God purposefully does not let us know. There's actually a entire thing in the book of Revelation where John was not allowed to write down some of the prophecies that were said because they were for John's ears only. And we weren't supposed we weren't allowed to know them. So that is a way that certain things are being kept hidden from us until the end. And we don't know what those things are until they take place. But anyway, it says after this that uh, <laughs> they were coming near Jericho. And this certain blind man sat by the road and he was begging. So he's, I mean, we talked about how there's no disability in Jesus's day. You know, if somebody was sick, too bad, they have to go beg. Like, that's just how it was going to be. There was no security for people with uh, ailments of any sort. This poor man is begging in the streets. He hears this like big multitude pass him, right? And he's like, what's going on? Like, wh what's this big old crowd? What, what's going on here? So somebody tells him, they're like, oh, Jesus of Nazareth is coming through. Like, make way, basically. And that's all the blind man needs to hear. He was probably waiting to hear about Jesus coming near him, waiting, probably hearing about all these other people that were healed, everything. So this blind man screams out, you son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This blind man was publicly declaring Jesus as the Messiah. That was what son of David meant. Son of David was the Messiah. This blind man understood better of who Jesus was than most of the people at the this time period. He knew Jesus was the Messiah. He just had that faith. So he says, Jesus, you son of David, have mercy on me. He doesn't know how far away Jesus is, but he is just screaming above everybody at the top of his lungs. Have mercy on me. And I mean, he's in darkness. Imagine what this man is going through. He doesn't know where Jesus is in that crowd. He doesn't know. He is just in total darkness. So he screams as loud as he possibly can. 
Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus Messiah, have mercy on me. And so the people are like, shut up, shut up. You know, you're being too loud. And he screams out even louder, like his throat is probably killing him. Jesus, you son of David, have mercy on me. So finally, Jesus stands still and commands this man to be brought to him. And so when the man comes near to him, he asks, what do you want me to do? (laughs) As if Jesus didn't already know. But whenever Jesus asks a question like this, which by the way, Jesus was a fantastic life coach. Jesus does a lot of what life coaches do. They ask questions in order to get people to think about what they are doing. So Jesus asks, what do you want me to do? Lord, that I may see again is what he responds. So he's like, I want to see. And so Jesus says, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. And Jesus didn't touch the man. Nothing. His faith was what healed him. And so immediately this man receives his sight and followed Jesus glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, praised God. So I don't know if this blind man became one of Jesus's disciples or not. We do know that Jesus had more than 12 disciples. He had quite a few. But this blind man, he started out with nothing and now he has everything. This is the difference between this blind man and the rich young ruler we talked about on Tuesday. Both in the same chapter, the rich young ruler believes he has everything and doesn't want to follow Jesus because he was comfortable with what he had. But then there's this blind man who had nothing and now receives not only his sight, but he receives life. He follows Jesus. He has that faith to know that Jesus is the Messiah. He has that faith to understand what eternal life truly means. And the people were comforted by the blind man's testimony because when they saw it, they praised God also. When they saw this man who had no sight following Jesus and glorifying God, the people saw it too, and they also praised God. That's the importance of a testimony right there. When you have a testimony of what God did for you, don't keep it to yourself. You need to share that puppy because it's important. And a lot of people might be able to relate to you also. So testimonies really are powerful things. But the last thing I want to mention here is the fact that Jesus was specifically going to Jerusalem to die, right? And yet this blind man was following Jesus there. So he really did have faith. And maybe he didn't understand that Jesus was going to die. But either way, this blind man chose the way of faith and was blessed for it. Well, faithful listeners, if you love this podcast and you want to support it, then go over to the P40 Ministries shop and get yourself a t-shirt. Oh, and also the Out of the Mire book that I wrote is now on sale on Amazon. It's on sale for like 13 bucks. So pick up a copy of it while it's on sale. I will link that devotional in the bio of this podcast episode. So all you got to do is click over to it and it will take you to an Amazon link. So pick one up for yourself. And in that way, you get a cool book. You get a devotional that uh, talks about purpose. And you can also support the Bible Explained podcast in that way also. Anyway, guys, I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your Thursday and that you are blessed. So happy listening and God bless.